Why? Because they are not reading law. They have taken the practice of law as a refuge. They are still hopeful that if they get a job tomorrow, then life will settle. You are that lot who had taken admission in law by choice. You wanted to do law, so you came into law. And therefore there is a distinction from that run out of the mill production of lawyers. And that is why I want you to be distinguished. What should be the distinction of those lawyers who have come to the field of law by choice? Because they want to make a difference. And that you can do only by thinking, not by simply reproducing the statutes onto your answer sheets. Let's go beyond 163A. There is another provision called 166 into Motor Vehicles Act. Now this 166 awards compensation and damages on the basis of a full-fledged trial which was avoided initially in 140 and then in 163A. 166 goes beyond 140 and 163A and awards compensation on the basis of full trial. That every factor under the sun will be taken consideration into. But 166 deficiency is the long drawn trial because at the end of the trial you will be getting a compensation and therefore 163A curtails that time duration 140 is instant. But 140 and 163A does not stop your entitlement of compensation. So 166 is also kept in place that in case these compensations are inadequate, you can put up your claim, face the whole trial, prove the fault of the owner of the vehicle and the insurer and get the adequate compensation. So the distinction between 140, 163A and 166 is that those first two sections go on no fault theory of rule of absolute liability whereas 166 runs on the principle of fault when you prove the fault then you get little more compensation so 166 operates on proving the fault of the owner Whereas 140, 163A, no fault theory. You are entitled this much if the, you are a victim of an accident under Motor Vehicles Act. Is that clear? Now, for fault theory, for principle of fault, you have to cover not only the owner of the vehicle, as a defendant in 1 to 66 trial, if you are conducting, you have to add up the insurer also, the driver also, the conductor of the vehicle also. Everybody is defendant in 166 trial because all of them jointly and severally are liable to compensate and that is called the principle of composite negligence. The composite negligence means when the negligence is being done by more than two persons and each of them is jointly and severally liable to compensate, that is called composite negligence. Right? And that is the distinction between contributory negligence, composite negligence, negligence. Now, as far as negligence is concerned, some of the states of USA have developed a principle.
principle of pure negligence. Now, apart from contributory and composite negligence, I'm giving you one more thing which is called pure negligence. Now, pure negligence is an extension of contributory negligence. Hmm? That the courts are supposed to assess the degree of contribution to the negligence. So if the degree of contributory negligence is also there, the compensation is denied to the victim because victim himself has contributed to the negligence and therefore he is not entitled for the compensation. Now, this pure negligence principle is applicable only in few states of USA, not even in entire USA. It's not applicable in India at all. Few states like Alabama, Virginia, etc., Washington DC, they are operate, those courts are operating on pure contributory negligence theory. That even if there is one percent of a contributory negligence by the victim, he is not entitled for compensation. So the moment there is a claim on the basis of negligence and the defendant says, hey, here is the pedestrian who came, he who jumped before my vehicle, therefore I am not liable, the victim is disentitled for the claim of any compensation on the basis of the principle of pure contributory negligence. But this pure contributory negligence is not applicable in India. There's another principle called comparative contributory negligence, which is applicable in India. Comparative contributory negligence. Now, comparative contributory negligence operates upon the theory that while there is a claim of negligence and there is a defense of contributory negligence, the courts shall determine what is the proportion of negligence of each side. Are you getting it? What is the proportion of negligence by the defendant and what is the proportion of contributory negligence by the plaintiff himself. That is called comparative contributory negligence. And the award under section 166 trial of the Motor Vehicles Act 1988, at the end of the trial the court has to give an award of compensation. So in India, the principle of comparative contributory negligence is applicable by the courts and the court at the end of the trial shall come up with the proportion that how much percentage of contributory negligence was there by the plaintiff himself. And on the basis of that percentage the amount of compensation shall be reduced. You got it? So if the compensation to be awarded on the basis of negligence is rupees 100 and there is a 25% contributory negligence proved by the defendant that even the plaintiff is 25% negligent to this accident then out of that 100 rupees, 25 will be deducted and 75 will be awarded. Am I making sense or there is some confusion? In case if you have any doubt, please ask. Now please remember that the compensation awarded in the 166 is not only 
reduced by the comparative contributory negligence but is also further set off against the amount already paid under 140 and 163A. So two reductions in the award of 166. First reduction is the con comparative contributory negligence. The second reduction is the set off against the money already awarded under 140 and 163A. But interestingly, the statute has also taken care of a fact that the amount awarded under 166 if suppose is less than 140 and 163A or suppose if it has been reduced after comparative contributory negligence below 140, 163A then because there is no, no scope of any set off. After the trial, the amount which is determined has already been paid under 140 and 163A. So is the victim supposed to return the money to the owner? In such a scenario, that after the trial of 166, the amount of compensation is lesser than no fault amount already paid? The law prohibits it. There is no refund at all. But if the amount of 166 is higher, then the victim is only paid the balance. <coughs> right? Is it absolutely clear? Now, remember that before coming to this compensation thing, of absolute theory and all 140, 163A, etc., which falls under Chapter 10 of the Motor Vehicles Act. As I said, there are licensing into Chapter 2, then licensing under Chapter 3 to the stage carriers. Stage carrier is the one which operates to travel passengers and stages. Do you understand what is a stage carrier? No? Stage carrier is, which is chapter 3, read with section 2 sub clause 40 of the Motor Vehicles Act, which carries the passenger for a reward of money or higher whatever amount in stages. Like the vehicle, the route of the vehicle is from X to de Y destinations. But the passengers traveling do not want to travel the whole distance. Mujhe agle gaon par utar dena. Agle gaon par isko utar de vakt do passenger us gaon se chad gaye ki mujhe do gaon baad utar dena. Stages mein ho raha na? Passenger transport. That is why it is called stage carrier. And the stage carrier is differently licensed under chapter 3. Uska license alag hota hai. You cannot drive a stage carrier on the basis of your motor vehicle's driving license under chapter 2, which you've got. Motor vehicle's driving license has certain necessities. For example, the age. If you go to obtain a driving license, what is the age, minimum age required? 18 years. Can you obtain a license below, below 18 years? Huh? Yes or no? Yes. What is the age for that? 16 years for what? No. Right. There is, what's your name? Huh? Samkir. What's your name? Aditya and Samkit, clap for them. Very good.
It's not learning license that you get in 18, below 18 years age. It's the type of vehicle which determines if it's below 50 cc and without gear, as they said, then you get a license at the age of 16. Hmm? Wobi 16 se pehle nahi. Halaki hamari colony me to bade bade motor vehicles chalate bache dikte and se dar lagta hai. Because abhi toy cars itni badi badi aani hai. Hmm? Ab uska kon measure kare 50 cc hai ki 500 cc hai. But they keep running very fast because they operate on battery. And these children, because they consider it a toy, Though to, to my mind it's absolutely a motor vehicle, but those battery operated toy with huge tires, they keep operating in this whole area uh, without any license. But the necessity under chapter 2, section 3 onwards is the necessity for driving license.